Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on differentiable pooling or deep pool. Uh, the paper name was Hierarchical Graph Dependence and Learning with Differentiable Pooling. Uh, so this paper is already discussed in the class by uh, Sir. But for the sake of completeness, first I'll give a brief summary of uh, the architecture and then we will be moving towards the implementation. So this is the overall high level illustration of deep pool. So this is the original network and the idea was that you know for graph classification from this whole graph whatever representation of each node that you are learning by applying a graph neural network. Uh, so you have to get a one single representation that is the graph level representation which you will pass through a multilayer perceptron neural network to do some sort of graph classification that means some sort of level you will be predicting that is corresponding to this graph. Now the, the easier way of doing pooling is like doing average of all these representation or uh, doing a summation or maybe some weighted summation the attention back summation or average you can take. Now the disadvantage is that those poolings are flat in nature that means uh, you know there is no way to capture the different hierarchy or different cluster that is inherent in the graph structure. So that's why uh, author of this paper has proposed differentiable pooling and the idea is that this original network has different you know cluster and this is true for any real world network that is available. The real world network has different cluster. There are a lot of clusters and together they form a network. The idea is that we will be pooling hierarchically so that at each layer we will be having one representation node for a cluster. So for example, here there are five clusters. So for this, this cluster where there are three nodes, we are getting one representation node. Uh, from here we are getting this node and from here we are getting this node. And this is how we are getting five nodes in the first layer. So in the first hierarchy, after one level of down sampling, we are getting five representative nodes or five virtual nodes you can say. Now here also you can find that there are two clusters that is forming. Uh, one is this and one is this. Now from there here again if you apply deep pool or hierarchical pooling you will be getting two nodes and then from here you will be getting one node. So this is actually we are doing pooling but we are doing in a hierarchical way so that at each layer we do pooling on a cluster and we found a node that is representing the cluster. So this is kind of the overall you know idea of deep pool uh, but you know in summary there are four equations that we have to kind of implement. Um, the equations are 3, 4 and 5, 6. Uh, so there is something called um, SL or a cluster assignment matrix that is SL uh, which dimension is NL cross NL plus 1. That means at each layer whatever nodes that is there in the next layer which particular cluster it will be belonging to that is kind of decided by this SL. And this is something that you have to learn through through to the you know learning the graph neural network so how we we get this sl so there are two actually there are two graph neural network that operates here uh, so one is gnn l embedded uh, given the adjacency matrix and the feature matrix of lth layer it actually gives the node embedding matrix which contains the node embedding of all the nodes for lth layer so this is the sim simpler or the, or the general uh, graph neural network layer which gives you the embedding. And there is another layer which is actually performing the pooling. Uh, they also takes, uh, it also takes uh, adjacency matrix and feature matrix at LH layer. But it gives you a, a some sort of logics and we perform softmax on top of that. And from there we get SL. So just remember there are two graph neural network which is operating here. Uh, one is for getting the node embedding and another one is for getting the cluster assignment uh, matrix. Now once we have both of these then you know we compute the feature matrix and adjacency matrix for the next layer uh, because you know at each layer our graph is kind of getting pulled or getting coerced. So we have a bigger graph beginning then we have representation node for each cluster. So our graph is kind of getting compressed in the next layer. So our adjacency matrix and feature matrix also will be changing. So how these nodes will be assigned to a particular node here that is actually decided by this SL or cluster uh, assignment matrix. 
but the corresponding a and x that means adjacency matrix and, and feature matrix for next layer these are the two equations um, you know that is that is uh, that is being uh, followed so we have our node embedding of previous layer and we also know the you know how the nodes are getting assigned to different uh, cluster in the in the next layer so kind of we are doing an aggregation here that sl transpose into jdl so that will be the uh, feature matrix for the next layer and sl transpose al sl uh, if you do the computation you will see that it's nl plus 1 cross nl plus 1 that will be like how the cluster will be connected in the in the next layer so basically what you have to do is that we have to implement these four equation and that will be my deep pool layer. Now, here are a few things that you have to notice that uh, as a GNN model, they have used graph sage architecture, but you can use any GNN model like GCN or graph attention network or there is a GIN model also. So you can use a, any other network, but they have proposed that this architecture has given superior performance. And also, you know, um, it's not like only deep pool layer are there. There are, you know, kind of after each deep pool layer, there are three layer of graph convolution is performed before the next deep pool layer. That means initially there will be some GCN layer or graph stage layer. Then there will be a deep pool layer. So the first few uh, graph stage layer will actually compute the node embedding. Then there will be a pooling layer, which will actually, you know, kind of do will be doing the pooling from the main graph to the uh, to the to the smaller graph or the or the compressed graph then there will be another again two or three uh, convolution layer and then the next deep pool so kind of uh, how we perform in images that cnn applied for two three layers then there is a pooling so similar kind of approaches uh, these people has proposed now i'll be going towards the implementation uh, so basically you know first you have to install few uh, few softwares like dgl you have to install because uh, the graph library that I'll be using is uh, for DGL and NumPy, Torch, uh, NetworkX, Matplotlib, Torch Geometric and this one is for TU dataset I think in assignment 1 you all have faced that while uh, you know loading TU dataset it was not loading so you have to install this particular one. These are the different um, you know libraries that you have to import now coming to the model first part first so as i was saying this is my overall model as i was saying that uh, you know before the deep pool layer there will be few graph stage layer and after that also there will be few graph stage layer so i have made this model very simple uh, i i didn't follow that their exact architecture they have actually mentioned that there will be two deep pool layer and there will be three graph stage layer before and after but i have taken it very simple that there will be initially two graph stage layer then there will be a deep pool layer and then after that there will be a graph stage layer now uh, for the first graph stage layer the input save is the input dimension or feature dimension of of the of the of the actual graph or actual graph feature and the output dimension i keep it at 30 so the, in the next graph stage layer obviously my input dimension will be 30 and the output again i kept as 30 now pooling uh, for deep pool i have kept input as 30 and output as 30 and there is something called pool size uh, that means that uh, here how many cluster will be there that is something that you have to uh, kind of decide this is a hyper parameter so that you will you will you know break it in four cluster or five cluster because you don't know in real world what is the exact number of cluster that you don't know this is something that is that, that you have to treat as a hyper parameter you have to try out different uh, numbers maybe you know six seven many numbers you can try out and you have to see which is giving uh, the best uh, result uh, so from the paper i have taken that for this particular uh, data set uh, i'm I, i'll be evaluating it on enzyme data sets for that the pool size was six that means uh, they are asking you to break it into six cluster so i have passed pool size is six then again after that there are two layer of graphs and then finally there will be a classifier for the the simple neural network uh, for the uh, doing the for doing the classification task so i'll be going to the forward later but i'll first explain the graph stage and deep pool layer so graph stage actually i have taken from the author's code the graph stage uh, author's code and it's it's pretty simple it's kind of gcn but there are some sort of uh, you know aggregation and all these things are doing so this is pretty simple and as I have mentioned that you can try out other GNN models like GCN, GAT, GIN, etc. 
Now the main thing is this deep pool model. So as I was saying, there are total five equations was there. Uh, equation, uh, sorry, equation five, six, and three, four. So first, I have implemented five, six. Um, so you know, deep pool. As I was saying, that there are two uh, graph neural network or graph stage. One is to generate the embedding, and the next one is to generate the assignment matrix or cluster assignment matrix. That is S. So there are two networks that or two graph neural network I have taken, and these are the two networks: GNN embed and GNN pool. So uh, first, I have implemented equation five. This is the equation five. So basically, I have passed the adjacency matrix and feature matrix through this GNN embedding and and generated the node embedding. So yeah, X and adjacency matrix I have passed and I have generated ZL. So this is my ZL. Next was again through a GNN layer, I will be passing A and X. I will be getting some some logic, and then I will be applying a softmax on top of that to get the SL. So here you see the assignment matrix. I have again passed X and adjacency matrix on top of that. I got the logic. Then on the first di dimension, I have applied the softmax, the zero dimension, and I got the um, the the assignment matrix. One thing that you have to notice here that for this. Two graphs says their input is actually different. For this one, the input dimension was n feature, but output dimension was n head. That means the hidden dimension. But here, the output dimension was n feature, but the uh, input dimension was n feature, but the output dimension was n next. That means what is the number of uh, nodes that will be there in the next layer? So these two networks, their purpose is also different. So their input and specifically the output dimension is also different. So that is something that you have to note. So SL I am getting after doing the softmax. Now I have implemented these two layers, X L plus one and A L plus one. So X next, that means the next layer X. This is basically S transpose Z. So this is basically S transpose Z L, and that we have matrix multiplier. Similarly, A L plus one is S transpose A S. So that also I have implemented here. A next is equal to S transpose At the same time, then again multiply with S. So this four step is for deep pool. This for one deep pool layer, you have to implement these four equations, and finally you will be outputting X next and A next. That means after the pooling layer, you have to um, give output to the next layer. What is the new adjacency matrix now and new feature matrix now? So basically, these two are the two model. Graph stage will be there and deep pool will be there. And you will stack them accordingly. I mean, according to your requirement. So you will stack them. I mean, you can do another deep pool here, and then few more graphs that you can try out uh, with, with yourself. But I have made it very simple. The very simple implementation that I have done. And classifier is, you know, again there will be um, few few more layer, few more linear layer with some uh, some some non-linearity like layer two. And the first one was 30 to 50 dimension, and then 52 number of classes. So whatever number of classes that you want to predict, that will be there. Now coming to the forward pass of this model. So you know, if the layer is a graph space, then uh, you will be calling of the graph space layer. And if the layer is a deep pool, then you will be calling the deep pool layer. But just remember that graph space is only giving you the embedding, but deep pool is giving output as X next and A next. So it's giving you X and adjacency as thing, and finally there will be a, a readout uh, function because at the end you will be kind of doing a summing up. You will be you will be returning as as your uh, output. Now coming to how you will train this model. So this is the data set I have used, Enzyme one. Um, there are few things I have done that what is the train size and test size. So I have taken 80% for train and there's 20% for test. Uh, for data loaders, there is this one collect function I have written. I mean, I, I'll try. I'll, I'll leave it for your exploration. This is very simple. So basically, you know, when you are forming the batches of adjacency matrix and feature matrix, you have to pad few uh, few zeros at the end because you know all the all the uh, kind of graphs will not have same number of nodes. So in a batch, you have to consider the maximum number of node of a graph that is possible, and for other Uh, other graphs, whatever nodes that is lagging, you have to just add zeros there. This is true for A and X, both the case. And L is your actual level. 
So this is how I have prepared the data. Then I have initiated the model and yeah and then I started the training part. This is I think all of you by now know. So I just run the model again just for your uh, demonstration. So these um, different libraries first you have to uh, import and then one by one let's run all the model the classifier the colet function the main okay one thing that uh, number of classes for engine is six so that's why i kept it six and input safe that means the feature dimension was three so that's why i have kept it three uh, so yeah pool size as i was saying that pool size i have chosen as six that means uh, from what will be the number of cluster in the in the in the deep pool layer that was six input safe you can replace it by here and number of classes you can replace by this and yeah if you run it this is how it is so yeah so typically in the paper they have run it for 3000 epoch uh, and they have done some sort of uh, early stopping on validation but i haven't taken the validation data set rather i keep it very simple train loader and test data i'm training on uh, train data and testing or test data but yeah you can you can try out different combination and yeah this is not the official code rather i have written this code uh, after reading the paper and so yeah i mean you can check after thousand epoch the result will not be exactly what is reported in the paper so for engine in the paper it is reported around 62 Oh, obviously you know in these two uh, also i haven't tried i mean this no link prediction and deterministic these are so i haven't tried so you can check see these three uh, possible result uh, but i have seen that after thousand epoch it reaches up to this one 58 around the result or sometimes 59 also the best test result if you take it may be 60. So yeah, I mean, this is not the best implementation, rather there are a lot of hyperparameter tuning that is possible. But overall, you know, this is how you have to implement a differentiable pooling or deep pool. So I'll be, you know, with this video, as you know, that we also share this notebooks. So I'll request you uh, that you can try out different other data sets and you can try out different other combination and see how the results are coming and try to understand specifically these four equations this is really really important for understanding this uh, this particular paper so yeah that's it from my side